you got to ask yourself, is YouTube the business and is content the business itself or is YouTube a marketing channel Mm -hmm. for your existing business? So I think leads becomes the biggest opportunity to your own products or services. And you can start doing that day one without your channel being monetized. Mm -hmm. So I think about one of our students, Jen DeVore Richter, when she had 546 subscribers, she emailed us and said, I just had my biggest revenue week ever in my business, $11,000 because of what I implemented from your program, Video Ranking Academy. Thank you so much. And she only had 546 subscribers Mm. and her videos were getting 26 views, 88 views, a couple hundred. Her best video is a couple thousand. She hadn't even crossed a thousand subscribers yet. Her channel wasn't even monetized, but if her channel got monetized by YouTube with those amount of views, they'd be paying her like $6. Mm -hmm. She'd be at a level like $22, Mm -hmm. whereas she had an $11,000 new week, which that's why for business owners and entrepreneurs, the question then becomes, how can I create a video that will attract my ideal audience? How can I then add value in that video that builds trust and helps them get to know me? And then what call to action can I give that they'd be interested in? to something probably free or even just to book a call. We help a lot of loan officers and real estate agents. A lot of that is just add value and like jump on the phone with us. Like, you know, add value, fill out the form and then we'll follow up. So then, then it's on you. I mean, you've had many guests and you're an expert yourself. Your sales process is now taking people off of YouTube. How good are you at follow up? How good is it? Is it email follow up? Is it social selling? Is it, um, they are going to book a call and then that's up to you. Mm-hmm. But the power is that YouTube itself can then drive traffic into that funnel, if you will. And you could start monetizing instantly when you start creating smart content. You know, one other story that's interesting is I think about my friend, Levi Lassick, read our book, YouTube secrets, his business partner, Travis Plum, Dallas real estate agents, small team, like, uh, you know, in their real estate shop, they have six people working for them or something. They, as far as marketing goes, they're not investing in any marketing. No billboards, no yellow pages, n- no classified ads. Which, by the way, I mean, if whatever works, like as a digital YouTube guy, I'm all for traditional stuff if it's going to work. But all they did was focus on organic YouTube content, not even paid ads, not paid Facebook ads, not paid leads from Zillow. His focus on creating YouTube content after reading our book and, and kind of thinking about that. And wouldn't you believe it? After six months, how many transactions had they converted in their business? Zero. How is that for a good news? Like, that's pretty exciting. I mean, so, okay. So that, but I love this story because it's realistic. They committed seeing, okay, I could see that in my local market. For them, it was Dallas. They, they, their channel is called Living in Dallas. So they do neighborhood tours, house tours, pros and cons of moving to Dallas, things, different neighborhoods, all this stuff. Six months. They got some leads, no transactions. I think it's around 2021. In the following 12 months, they do $90 million. Wow. Which leads to about 2.9 collected real estate commissions, 2.9 million. And from just organic YouTube traffic, Mm -hmm. they started realizing that, you know, if they're getting 10,000 views a month, that equals like 77 leads. And here's also what's crazy about the leads. Uh, Forget my numbers there. I don't remember what the numbers are, but the leads were so qualified. He told me stories of docu signs getting signed. They never met the person. They go, Oh yeah, no, I, I trust you. You know, whatever. I've been watching your videos. It's kind of weird to be on the phone with you. You know, I've been watching your videos. Like I already know, like, and trust you. I already mm-hmm. have got a vibe. I feel like I already know you. Or when they meet in person, there's already like rapport. And energy. even though Levi might be meeting them for the first mm-hmm. time, this person had got to know them in video. They tapped into search discovery, search terms, as well as kind of viral approaches. Should I buy a house now? Is the market crashing? All this different stuff. And only using YouTube. And again, as they've scaled, you start realizing we can hire somebody, we can do paid ads. Why not? Like, I mean, if anything works, keep scaling it up. But that's just the power. And to that point, I want to say that at at the end of nearly $3 million in revenue, their channel was still under 5,000 subscribers. Wow. A small YouTube channel, but they were attracting the right people with the right. And I've heard real estate called high ticket affiliate marketing. 
Because if you recommend $10 lipstick and you get 3%, then you just made 30 cents. But if you sell a million dollar house and you get 3%, then you just made $30,000. So really, real estate is like high ticket affiliate marketing. And let me throw in one nugget for your community. I think the other, if you were looking for kind of a business model that, or like the shortest path to making big money with a small channel, JV partnerships would be the best way to do that. Meaning being an affiliate for somebody else that has an event coaching mm -hmm. program, mastermind or course. And the reason why is because of percentages. Amazon gives me 4% on cameras and ticket price, but let's say it's a thousand bucks camera. I get 4%. I make $40. If you recommended somebody's educational program, that was a thousand dollars. Probably you're going to get a 50% commission. You'd make $500. So this is just a leverage conversation. So if you could start creating videos and one example, if you go to a website like clickbank.com, you, you could find somebody's like marathon training program. So if you started like a running channel, marathon training, and maybe you're also like, well, I'm not really an expert, but I'm a hobbyist. And like, this is the marathon training program I did. My uh, stepbrother, Alan Escalin did a, uh, an Ironman and he paid a, he paid for a couple thousand dollar program because it was Ironmans are no joke. So if he documented his journey and got other people inspired and then recommends that as an affiliate, he can make thousands of dollars in a commission. If he learns how to rank videos, passive income, I mean, you only need a hundred transactions if you make a thousand dollar commission to make six figures. So I think that this kind of goes into that framework of you could be a knowledge broker, a reporter, and eventually the expert. I think one of the coolest ways to start a YouTube channel is to be a reporter to kind of do what you're doing, you know, and you could bring on other guests, a knowledge broker of other people's knowledge. And when they have products and programs, you recommend those. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you might be getting 77 views on your videos, 376 views on your videos. But if you're attracting the right people with the right titles and the right information, and then someone's like, oh, cool, I can go deeper with this person, then you that would be so compared to a super chat, someone tipping you three dollars mm -hmm. on YouTube. And that's where ninety nine percent of creators are stuck. Is there kind of in a, a somewhat small minded money mentality mm -hmm. by not thinking about better vehicles to earn uh, bigger income. So, so smart. So many things that I want to kind of dive deep on. And one thing that I want to add is uh, sponsorships, right? So once you actually have an audience, you can do things like what I do. If you guys are watching my channel, I'm always doing like host read ads that sponsors are paying me for. But of course, it just depends on how far along you are because you need like, you know, thousands of views for that to actually make sense monetarily. So let's you you mentioned this at a high level, but I'm curious to understand, can you give us an example of a sales funnel for like a coach or an entrepreneur? Like what would that sales funnel look like on YouTube? So my favorite way to do it, and this gets very granular is I like teaching and I like teaching with numbers. So if you're a coach, what's three things? So insert pain point that you solve. Um, three little known tax strategies to save thousands for business owners. Pretty sick title. You get in the video. Number one, Augusta rule. Number two, cost seg bonus depreciation. After number two, tie in the second point that you have a free thing that goes deeper on it. And by the way, if you want uh, access to my cost seg bonus depreciation calculator, if you want, um, or just in the whole video, if you want my guide, these are just three of the strategies. If you want my guide with 21 of the best tax strategies for entrepreneurs, just hit the link in the description or go to thinktaxstrategies.com. That doesn't exist, but like, you know, you give that pretty URL. Maybe it does. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> maybe not ours though. Um, and one of the ways, I, I, one of the reasons why I like making it point number two though, is because if it polarizes the right people to download it, good, but it's also going to potentially stop the viewing session, which is not what YouTube wants most. I think you absolutely should call people off the platform, but do it in such a way that also people could stay on. And there's still a reason for them to stay on for the next point. So that's why I would do that on point number two. And I would tie it to the point. Like you teach a little bit about that. And then you're like, Hey, listen, if, if you actually want to go deeper, my entire LinkedIn navigator, deep dive training, I would give it to you for free. It's 20 minutes long. Just, you know, uh, click the link in the description. So that's how I would do it. And then 
And then it's kind of like online marketing best practices. I think the naming of whatever you're giving away free, the desire of what you're giving away free, alignment on the entire thing and congruency. Congruency is that when they land on the page, they're on the right page. People have horrible landing pages, mm -hmm. navigation above. It doesn't even seem like it's them. There's not authority there. It doesn't load. It's it's like malware notification. There's all kind. I mean, it's, it's kind of stressful. Someone's like, man, there's so many things. But I mean, there's a lot of... It, you just want to remove friction. And at any point, and where uh, sometimes the biggest mistake is like, you're making a video that have people thinking one way and giving a call to action that's not related. Think about what video would attract the ideal person for your opt-in. What opt-in would attract the ideal person for your offer? And those things are broken all the time in people's businesses. Like someone opts in, but they're not the right psychology, psychographics, demographics, because it was a cool th free thing, but did it really align? And then the YouTube videos. And you know, if you're, if, uh, if you were talking about how to hire team members in a video, and then you were like, and, and by the way, if you want to download my 21 tax savings guide, like not horrible because maybe some people are like, that does sound interesting, but the video that attract the reason they're there, the better guide would be a freebie. That's like, um, you know, and if you want to get my scripts, my job interview scripts for how to really filter out the wrong candidates and lock in the right candidates, just go to think filter, think hiring um, or click the link in the description. So that would be my biggest thing is like, I think the strategy of the content that attracts the right people, then the opt in that ties together concurrency and the whole thing. And then again, a good sales process and funnels, you know, you probably have endless episodes in your own library of some good stuff on, on, on making great funnels. Um, but what's powerful about that is it is a psych psychology. Everybody listening to this needs to know thinking about their whole, you could call it sales journey, the whole customer journey, thinking about the entire thing start to finish. And that is a never ending process of tweaking. All of us could improve it. My we ours is probably a six out of 10. And we've done pretty well. Like there's there's so many, you know, things that small tweaks lead to giant peaks. And so just being willing to be like, can I ch change my opt in in the future? Or can I change my offer page as I'm just my offer page, the checkout page and the thank you page. And, and then follow up. And what do I want to do next? And is that all aligned? And usually when, when things are not working, it's just because a piece is broken and there's some kind of like cognitive dissonance that happens or something. Sometimes from YouTube to your landing page, it's, it's not quite what it looked like. And, and it, you know, all these little details like that. If you enjoyed this podcast and are ready for some deep dive YouTube strategy, just go to thinkmasterclass.com to get access to my one hour on demand YouTube strategy class. You'll be looking over my shoulder as I share my best tips and you can watch it on demand right now at thinkmasterclass.com.